Hi, welcome to a new video dedicated to the new racer from DJIC, the Pro Line. This is the B175. It's a 175mm X brushless quadcopter, uh, the new revival design of the X structure. And uh, it's welcoming, first of all, very strong ESC, uh, 20 amper supporting 4S battery, uh, very uh, tiltable FPV camera. It's a 800 TVL uh, CMOS uh, camera uh, already oriented with an angle of 45 uh, degrees. You can install on top if you want, you have a GoPro mount. So it's uh, have a very strong FPV ring, okay, and uh, the 175 welcomes some 4 inch uh, props, while the uh, P200 welcomes some 5 inch. So uh, this is the RTF version, including a basic uh, clone of the uh, FlySky transmitter. Let's discover uh, the content of this box. Here is a content of all the elements of the DJC uh, P175 Pro. So I also forgot to mention the presence of a cover leaf antenna for the FPV ring. So first of all, let's start for example with the uh, LiPo. It's uh, 100, uh, 1300 milliamps hours with a discharge rate of 30C ending with an XT60 connector. Let's give for example an indication of, of the weight and uh, well, should be quite similar and uh, it's 102.2 grams and uh, if you are looking for a replacement but I think you have a lot of room in the battery uh, compartment but it's a, a 71 by uh, 35 by uh, 22 millimeters okay uh, relatively strong uh, battery uh, and the good news uh, you can power this machine either with 3S or 4S. Here are the uh, ESC. Uh, they are supporting a 20, up to 20 ampere, that's cool. And they are flashed with uh, a relatively recent version of Bailey. Be aware, um, if it's possible to flash a new version of the uh, firmware of the BLLE firmware, but please don't 
use the R1 indicated by barely suit when you will connect thanks to the uh, clean flight pass through because it will uh, most uh, probably break break your ESC. You can recover them, but it's a little bit tricky. Okay, so please uh, don't flash the proposed. Uh, firmware for this ESC if you want to upgrade the current BLED uh, firmware. Anyway, um, motors are quite strong, they are 2205 type and it's covered with a kind of heat shrink, it's uh, sensory to cool them and wants to be uh, 2600 kg, so relatively fast. Uh, the shaft's diameter is relatively uh, classic, pure 5 mm, okay. and they are associated to with these uh, props, some uh, bull nose of 40 45, okay, pretty strong. And uh, instead to have classic uh, cap for quadcopter, you have this uh, board, okay, needs uh, it's top board, okay, like the old fashioned way to unlock your props. Anyway, <clears throat> Uh, in fact, this hex design is nothing else that uh, I returned in the past. Okay, at the beginning of the uh, uh, first quad capture, the hex structure was more uh, into uh, the favor of a racer. After came the first black and um, which H uh, structure, and everything goes went into this direction. Now it's a kind of revival or such kind of structure. Uh, it's much more, in fact, it's much more easy to uh, perform flips and rolls and okay, and probably to fly acro. Uh, so what I can say about this machine, first of all, uh, the uh, you have the lower part uh, are based with uh, three millimeters. Uh, Okay, you have to calibrate three millimeters strong arms, so they are pretty, pretty strong. Okay, so very solid. The upper part is our upper plate is a little bit less, it's a two millimeters, but you can see that it's very strong. You are very uh, aluminum standoff, very large, okay, uh, close to uh, five. Uh, centimeters 50 millimeters and you can notice that the FPV camera uh, in fact is installed on the uh, tiltable uh, camera mount but uh, is blocked by the position of the receiver in fact you cannot adjust or just increase a little bit the uh, angle but you cannot really reduce it less than 40 degrees on the rear side you can find the uh, receiver a uh, fly sky uh, model uh, with only one uh, Servo plug, I mean that it's in PPM or uh, Ibus uh, version, and um, probably in PPM. And uh, B B B B S, you can find the uh, Skyline 32. It's uh, nothing else that uh, a compatible NAS 32 board, okay? And uh, you have the on the right side the micro USB plug, and below you have a metallic casing. I'm not sure. What it's used for, but anyway, you have metallic structure, and on the top here you can find the video transmitter. So uh, I don't know how you can really access to the uh, switch to select the video frequency. Okay, you have a tiny button here. No, I'm not sure it's possible. So uh, be aware, there is probably a way to change the video frequency more easily. Uh, the connector, okay, is uh, an RP ECMA, if I'm not wrong. So uh, seems to be attached thanks to two nuts, so to not be in contact with the carbon element. Let's check that it's a real carbon. I will make a small conductivity test, okay with my digital multimeter, but sounds to be. Okay, let's check the upper plate, for example. Okay. Seems not. Yes, a lower is it. Strange that the, the upper is not. No, it sounds to be not a uh, carbon. Maybe fiber, imitating. Yes. Ah, uh, no, 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 it's beeping, so it's it's also carbon, okay, so that's good news. Okay, I was afraid. Um, so, 
a very uh, strong and you have the presence of a butter, a built-in butter that's always good for such size when you have a built-in butter. And of course, we, we have to check that it's uh, the butter can be uh, activated through one of the uh, switch of the transmitter. Uh, let's talk about the transmitter. It's a basic FlySky model without any LCD display. Two three-way buttons, that's all. So I guess one for the flight mode and the other one can be free and I strongly advise to actionate one for the butter in case you lose your quadcopter into tall uh, grass or something like this. It's always good to be able to trigger uh, the uh, budding. Uh, coming with you have also this uh, camera mount I will show, uh, but you can find also, also the way in the Fire AG uh, video how to uh, mount this uh, GoPro mount on the top of the uh, quadcopter. But I can give you some information about the weight and I found that it's already already uh, heavy, even the P1875, for example, without LiPo props and so on. Uh, I, can, I can install better the... Uh, this sorry this system reached close to 271 gram you have to add 100 grams for the uh, lipo plus uh, the uh, weight of the props okay plus uh, the weight of the uh, GoPro mount for example Okay, and uh, the and the 10 grams of the bolt, uh, the nuts attaching the, the the props, you will reach a total close to 400 grams. It's already already uh, heavy, in my point of view. Uh, it sounds very solid for sure, but it could be a little bit more uh, lighter, in my point of view. On the bottom part, you can find three LED. They can be configured through uh, clean flight or beta flight. It's up to you to indicate to have some light indication. It's always good. Thanks to the uh, LED strip uh, features, you have to turn on by the default uh, in your default clean flight configurations. So uh, sound has to be a very solid structure. I check some points uh, before to uh, see the clean flight uh, default features and settings. Uh, first of all, be sure that you attach uh, your clock elephant antenna before to boot it. And the uh, wall. Well, it's strange because uh, I don't know exactly for the uh, battery uh, bay, which is uh, based on this kind of carbon plate you have to, to, to fasten with this uh, strap, okay, but whatever you are blocking, it's still, uh, you know, lying on this uh, bolt, so it's not very efficient. You need, we need an anti-slip system for sure to be more... Uh, efficient okay uh, another point uh, you have a small indicator on the video transmitter on top so I will check now what is the default behavior of the machine when I boot it um, to check if for example uh, the uh, flight mode is there on this switch and what is the role of this one uh, before to connect it to clean flight to check that so let's uh, power the system after be sure that the antenna is plugged. Okay. You have this beep uh, emitted until the transmitter is turned on. And as soon as the uh, pairing is done, uh, the uh, battery stops to emit uh, this annoying um, treble sound. Okay, so uh, let's check that. You can see that the switch at B is associated with the flight mode. For example, the last one. Without the green light, means red light, we are in acro mode. Okay. Let's check the role of the switch. Okay. The second is to activate the butter. That's a good point. That it's done by default. And here is to turn on off the LEDs. Okay. The last position. Uh, let's harm it. Okay, and let's check if the lights are oriented versus the direction of the six. Nothing. So the LEDs are not uh, tuned, uh, the LED strip are not uh, set yet in clean flight. 
on the top of it, I told you that you have uh, an indicator indicating the current channel inside the band. Okay, so now let's plug everything into Clean Flight. Oh, before that, uh, I want to test uh, the face safe behavior. Okay, so let's check that. Arm the quadcopter and turn off the transmitter. One, two, okay, stopping almost immediately, that's a good point. So, most of the job have been done by DJC, that's definitely a good point. And now, I will check the basic uh, clean flight configuration, which version it come with. Okay, so be sure to have the props half, transmitter half, the battery half, and let's start to plug the uh, uh, Cab USB cable into your PC port. If you install correctly the CP210 driver, you should have a COM3 appearing on top. Let's press on connect. Okay, and immediately back up your default uh, configuration into a file. Save it. Okay, so let's create a folder. And say now what we have we have a gyro accelerator magnetometer but no RAM to save your log uh, mid-flight logs check port only two are two UART okay so this one could be used for example to install a bus receiver motor stop one shot 125 not turn on by default okay receiver connected in ppm monitoring the bay battery loop time 2000 very strong value because you have an A32 board can be faster let's trip up turn on but probably not configured into the uh, let's trip section. Face safe. Face safe stage two enable, but land. Okay. PID tuning. It will be right. Roll rates and pitch rates are very low, so probably we have to increase that. PIDs are probably not set, not optimized. Receiver We have to turn on Working The switch B is AUX1 And the switch C is AUX2 mode when it's up you are in angle when it's switch B in the middle you are in horizon stabilized and less a little bit less stabilized okay and when it's down you are in acro beeper is when it's the switch C in the middle okay and the lead low when it's down it's always good to perform ESC calibration so be sure to have prop half okay click here to enable put maximum value here connect the power wait the end of the ESC music Okay, now ESC are calibrated. Let's strip. Nothing is configured. Tensor, black box, no memory. So, and show version. 
the last clean flight is installed. Okay, so pretty good. So basically, the PID's value can be uh, probably better optimized, and the uh, let strip also to be configured to play a role when you are moving the sticks. Okay, so uh, let's check, for example, if the one shot. 125 is enabled, can be enabled. So I will turn on here and disable motor stop because I don't like really. Okay, let's power the system. Okay, one shot, 125, can be turned on. That's good. You can decrease also the loop time. Probably to 1000 should be okay. The board is uh, strong enough, faster enough to handle this uh, low value of loop time. Let's go to more advanced uh, settings for the uh, GJEC P175 or the P200, should work. So uh, plug again the um, USB, okay, to um, connect to a clean flight configurator. And let's check uh, different elements we can do or already uh, do. So personally, I like when the motor uh, a little, a little bit, okay, so turn on the one shot 125, that's possible, okay, so be aware that the board is flipped if you are, are flashing a new version to apply the correct, uh, yeah, degrees, and uh, as I showed previously, you can decrease the loop time to 2000, okay, so here is okay, let's strip is a turn on, the face safe, we can select to drop immediately. Okay, save and reboot. And check the PAD settings. Okay, uh, the level strength is 2, so it's more or less okay. Uh, we will leave the default PID settings for all the three axes, but uh, we will need to increase the rates for both roll, pitch, and yeah. Let's turn to 0.5, for example. Okay, save it, receiver, okay, uh, nothing to do except maybe to uh, decrease uh, the uh, value here, or a linear throttle. Mode. We can keep like this, except maybe if you want to add the air mode to the last uh, values. Okay, so when to so when we will be in acro, we will be also in air mode. The beeper will stay like this, and let's check the let strip. Okay, so by default, as you can see, all the three are associated with the uh, color, so let's take the first one. We will turn off the color and more associated to indicator and to harm sequence. Let's take the second, disable the color and associate to its indicators and harm. And the center one, we will disable and more to a throttle and a uh, warming. Okay, save that. So now uh, the work is done with the uh, clean flight. Uh, we will show how to, for example, to turn on the dampening light into a bare LED suite. So let's check that. First of all, uh, you will need, if you never did it, to download the last uh, bare LED suite. Actually, this is the version 
uh, 1621401 that's it so go to this URL and download this file okay and um, when you will uh, do that job um, you will have this uh, folder and run the uh, software uh, be aware and it's very very important as I said initially uh, the uh, one you are connect to barely shoot here okay and then you uh, will have to connect your battery at this time okay and then you will have to uh, press the check button okay so be aware it's very important uh, the detected firmware when you go to the uh, flash uh, barely the detected one is not the right one so do not flash with this uh, file okay so press cancel actually so I will uh, pour off the, yes, the battery first of all so what you will need to do you will need to uh, read carefully these uh, web pages here okay so uh, it says for the uh, Emax Lightning 20A and 30A so what you will have to do you will have to download in these web pages here okay this file Emacs Lightning 20 multi. so go here okay and this is what I go here and you will have to download this file this one so press on it okay and you will have uh, the bit done and you can for example right click on the row and save this file okay directly in X format that is, you can see that it's in X format I already did it so now I will be able to flash uh, the uh, file so how to flash the new version of the correct uh, firmware of for uh, the uh, Emacs uh, Lightning 20A so first of all you have to run the software okay and uh, they are very important go to option and uh, check the expert mode that's pretty important then okay you will have to press uh, to select the uh, C-Lab Bailey put louder clean flight okay then you will be able to select in the con 3 uh, you should have something appearing like this click on connect then you will have to connect your battery okay then click on check all the four ESC should be uh, seen through the clean flight uh, bridge then click on the flash belly very important do not flash this uh, nano 20a click on ignore, ignore inappropriate MCU and click here ignore the list pick up a file then select the X file to just record it ok click on open and uh, they say that they found you said ignore ok and then you can now flash uh, the correct one let's go okay so let's do the same for the other uh, ESC, the second one, click here, open, ignore, and click yes. Okay, yes, yes. So set one more time. Click on in your MCU. Pick up the file. Ignore 
and yes. And the last one. Ignore. Yes. Okay, so now you can see the second, the third, all of them are in uh, 14.6 and we can turn on the dampening light here like this and we can write this, okay, we can check, okay, and write. all of them that's done pretty cool now we can disconnect everything and the dampening and the flashing is done first demo flight of the DJIC uh, P175 Pro so I configure more or less everything uh, flash to the last barely uh, VMware activate one shot uh, 125. It seems that uh, the other shot 42 etc. Multi shot are not supported uh, by this ESC. Anyway, a uh, small trick uh, uh, you have a tiny button on the top of ESC, this one, and when it's on the left, like this, uh, you're turning full power of the video transmitter. Uh, something between uh, 500 milliwatts, uh, close to 600. And if you press it on the right, you have just 11 to before, less than 25 milliwatts, probably for this year market. So be aware of it. If you find that you don't have a lot of range, another remark: if you want to select the frequency band and the video uh, frequency inside the band, you have a tiny button here. Okay, so you have to. Use a small tweeter to access, and you will be able to uh, change as well the frequency and the band, uh, the band by a long press. Um, I configure the face app as well, so it's emitting beeping uh, when you have, don't have any activity of the radio. Okay, that's great. Okay, uh, I would just record the uh, FPV station thanks to my goggles. It's set actually to the E8 frequency, so the last from a bus cam. Okay, so to power the machine, well, with my settings of a clean flight, you have to power the connector. Wait a, a couple of seconds before to turn on the radio. Okay, now you have this continuous beep, you can turn on the radio. And now it's stopping. If not, it will uh, continue to beep, it's annoying. Okay, I will record now the FPV station. Let's go. Powerful. Still some wobbles, I guess. But it sounds uh, very good now. The uh, I hope you can see the indication of the lights when I'm turning. Pretty good. Pretty responsive. Sounds to be a
watching or like. Very precise and a lot of power. Okay, I will land now. Um, oh, super great.